Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thy Strong Word. I'm Pastor A.J. Espinosa. We're reading the entire Bible together, book by book, chapter by chapter, and I know we are so close to finishing out the book of Joshua, but let's take a look at a psalm here. It's been a little while since we did, and we are actually going to be start. Uh, we're going to be going backwards now. I'm going to start going towards Psalm 1, because I know that some of you were like, hang on a second, what happened to like the first, you know, 24 Psalms here? Uh, so we're taking a look at Psalm 23 today, and now this is a great one. This is a treat. You know, this is one that it's a shorter Psalm, and it's one that's just very well known. It's one that we hear a lot at funerals. Of course, there's that very uh, traditional rendering, which comes from the King James, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Right. And, uh, you know, it's uh, this psalm just keeps coming up again and again. It's that illustration of what the word want means and doesn't mean. Um, it's just a, it's a very typical psalm of David. There's so many good things going in here. It's great that we're looking at it today. And we are joined today uh, by, and this is great because it's been a little while and it's so great to have him back for a psalm again. It's Pastor Nathan Metter, pastor of St. John Lutheran Church in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Welcome back. So good to have you back with this psalm, no less. It is good to be back. Uh, you know, when we had, a, we had a holiday fall in, in my normal January slot, so it's good to be back and uh, with the uh, with you and and our regular listeners at at KFUO. Definitely, and uh, and you get Psalm twenty three, right? So that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, you know, there there is there is one of those things uh, as I was doing a little prep work. Uh, as one of the resources that I was listening to talking about it says, you know, there, there is, there is, there's great comfort in the familiarity with it, but there is also the danger that if in the process of of, of pulling this apart, it may, it may challenge maybe some of our more traditional looks at, at this, and uh, which which then kind of in in a way it makes it a, a welcome uh, tour. In another way, the uh, the bar of expectation tends to be a little higher as well. So. Uh, so we're hoping that uh, the Lord leads us in the middle way, and and we uh, dig through this and come up with uh, something that is uh, that uh, both edifies our hearers and is true to the text. That's really well said. I mean, and that is the challenge I think with a lot of texts, um, but especially the familiar ones, right? Because when we, you know, and this is something we do a lot on Thy Strong, where we look at a lot of these chapters that that uh, people maybe have never even heard read before, right? And so when we're dealing with those sorts of things, we you know, we're getting into it in depth and we're kind of just filling in lots of blanks and we're like, okay, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I guess that's what this is about. But when you have a psalm or like something from the Gospels and everyone kind of feels like they sort of already knew what it meant, right? They sort of already kind of got the gist and the big idea. When you get into it in depth, right? It's like, now hang on a second, um, did we know <laughs> what, what it was really about? You know, did we right. actually understand it? So th there is there is uh, a little bit of a, a challenge when it comes to these familiar texts. But mm -hmm. I mean, m maybe that's all the reason more why we need to take a close look at them, because we too often can kind of just, you know, hear the, the psalm read and say, oh, yeah, it's that one. Yeah, OK, I already know. But there's so much more, perhaps, that we've been taking for granted. Absolutely. Uh, one of the, you know, especially when you start digging into, um, you know, the, the the Hebrew poetry, when you start, uh, you know, there, there's a there's a depth and, and a richness that um, I, I don't think, especially since the Western mind, we don't deal with poetry a whole lot. Uh, although, you know, we are in that, you know, we're we're you know fresh off that. Uh, Valentine's Day, you know, roses are red, violets are blue, you know, <laughs> I, you know and I love you, uh, you know, but Hebrew poetry is so much, so there's so much more depth. Just recently uh, led my folks here at St. John through a Bible study, and one of the resources that I that I included in it was uh, some some video work from the BibleProject.com that really did a neat... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, did a really neat uh, understanding and, and, and explanation of... of, of how there's there's a depth and a richness to Hebrew poetry that that we can't fully appreciate um, because a we don't understand poetry and b we don't think like the Hebrews. So right, right. You know that that it's true. I mean, and of course, you know, let let's not 
suggests that, uh, you know, roses are red is the extent of the depth of English poetry, right? I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you sorry, strike sorry. me as one of those guys that'll read a Shakespearean sonnet every once in a while. I, I don't, you know, we're up here in Wisconsin, we're we are here and, and bratwurst, you know, we don't, we don't pick up that, we, we're not like the Southern California Shakespeare readers. Right. Okay, <laughs> right, right. Well, <clears throat> right, we don't necessarily have to get into, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just ten, Tennyson I'm just... or, or Poe or anything anything like that today either right. but but certainly there is um yeah there, there there's more to appreciate and well and maybe you're to your point though i mean this is something we've talked about actually you and i have talked about this before i'm pretty sure in relation to the psalms that you know too often you know we we we, we kind of have lost our sense of poetry it's not something that many of us um, really engage with very often the extent is sort of consuming it uh, via popular music and so um, it, it is it is a little bit of a challenge, actually, for that reason, to try to appreciate um, poetry of any kind, whether it's kind of traditional English poetry or even the poetry of the Bible. So, uh, yeah, for that reason, it's certainly good to take your people through, um, you know, th- this poetry and, and try to figure out, you know, what's what's going on, not just on the kind of what do the words mean level, but like on the on the poetic level also. So especially when you when you too. when you uh, consider that, you know, in in the text of the scripture in its entirety, you know, poetry, you know, about a third of the, the words on the page are written in poetic form. You right. know, but you know, cuz not only not only do you have you know, the psalms are obviously all poetry, but um you you get large segments of the prophets or poets. You know, you have, you know, you have some of the you know, some of the more familiar, uh, you know, you've got even some poetry in the New Testament. As, you know, in Philippians chapter 2, there's some poetry there. And uh, so, so yeah, it, it, as we grasp that, it helps us get a better understanding of not only what the words say, but how they're said. Yeah, that's right. They're both, they're both important. So, yep. very good. Well, let's take a look at the psalm then. Would you open us up with a prayer for sure. us and for everyone listening today? O oh Lord, our shepherd, uh, you lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Keep, help us to keep that in mind, O oh Lord, that as we, as we read and study and, and mark this, that you are leading us for your name's sake. Your grace, your mercy says far more about you than it says about us. So as we engage this word this day, we pray that your Holy Spirit would wash over us, that you would lead us in the discussion, bless both the leaders and the hearers this day, uh, so that uh, we might indeed be reminded who we are uh, as, as sheep under your care, uh, and then the joy that comes in that as well. Uh, lead us uh, to that end for the sake of Jesus our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Well, let's go ahead. And, you know, I I already read it as we were just kind of introducing things. But let's read just the first verse. Um, And maybe that can kind of just get us oriented here. And and then perhaps what I'm thinking, because it's only six verses, um, we can go and kind of after we kind of introduce it and kind of say, okay, what are we looking at? We can read the whole thing through, kind of have, like you were saying, kind of a little bit of a sense there for the structure and what it's doing, uh, and, and then we'll kind of keep going through verse two, three, four, uh, five, six, like one by one, like that. Right. All right. All right. So here is just verse one, which in Hebrew includes both the title, the superscription, um, and what we have marked as verse one in our uh, printed English text, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So, uh, very familiar words. Um, it, it is interesting, though, to consider, you know, when we think of this psalm, that first verse, I think, like like many familiar hymn tunes that have a very familiar opening phrase or first verse, it kind of does function like a title in some ways. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, it does say a psalm of David, and that is striking when your first line is talking about a shepherd and what that might mean for what this is supposed to say about the psalm as a whole. Correct. 
you know, and and this is where you know, as we know David's story, um, you know, he is, you know, they, they, there's a joke up here. You can, you know, if if you ever marry a girl from Wisconsin, like I did, you can take the girl out of Wisconsin, but you can't take the Wisconsin out of the girl. And, um, uh, you know, and that's what happens when a good old flatlander from just outside of St. Louis marries a Wisconsin girl. What do I do? The Lord smiles, and I spend <laughs> most of my ministry in Wisconsin, uh, where there's uh, like a, you know, we're up to our cheeks in snow right now. Uh, but that's oh, goodness, story. yeah. Yeah, but, and I think the same can be said of David. Um, da- you, you can take the shepherd out of the field, but you can't take the shepherd out of David, and, and you know, and uh, and and it and when and and if you uh, knowing the history of David's life, it's when he forgets hit where he's come from. Yeah, and and it's where he forgets where when he forgets where he's come from, that's when he's in his greatest trouble. You know, right. uh, you know, you, you sit there and and you know he forgets that that he was you know amidst you know when. Uh, in the spring of the year, when kings go off to war, when David mm-hmm. forgets where he is, he's on a rooftop and ends up in the Bathsheba mess. Um, mm-hmm. And yet, you know, and and then we see the we see how that devolves. And and yet, he is constantly reminded, you know, by how you know again, sometimes very bluntly through my favorite prophet Nathan. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, he he's reminded very bluntly. You are that man, but then right away he you know you know he takes the the sheep back to where he where he's from, the shepherd under uh, the, she- the 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 pasture under God's protective care and restores him. Uh, so so I I think you know that that that's just pretty remarkable. Uh, as, you know as we if we go with the consensus uh, of David writing this, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, there are a lot of times in his life where he's been. You know, where where he the the thing that's been lacking is not financial resources. The thing right. that's been lacking is his faithfulness. You know, and right. when he yeah. forgets who he is. Yeah, I like the way you're putting it there, right? Like who when he forgets who he is, and we can of course relate to that. That you know, and when, when we mess up, right? I mean, yep. uh, especially when we when we really mess up and we really stray from the path. Like, I mean, aren't those the moments where we have really forgotten? who we are, where we've come from, right? I mean, it's, uh, I, I remember, um, you know, back when I was uh, directing a foreign after school program for um, school age kids, you know, a lot of what we worked on was this idea of identity, right? And that's, that's, um, it, it's, it's, well, of course, it's a, it's a baptismal theme, right? Because, right. you know, that's as Christians, when we consider our baptism, like we're really being reminded of, who we are and whose we are, right? And and it's you know that's why there is that constant remembrance of baptism that Luther connects to repentance, right? Like if you're actually gonna lead a different life, like you have to have this before you, uh, who who you are, where you've come from, you know, who whose you are, because if if that's not before you, I'm um, it's, it's it's just so easy to lose your way. It just it just happens like by itself, like automatically. You just get on autopilot, and before you know it, you're. 20 miles down the wrong freeway and it, it's just a mess. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and that, that's just, it. you know, so often um, our biggest, you know, we forget why we exist and we become so, so mechanical in the what and the how that, that, um, and, and that's when we do lose our moorings. Um, and, and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of stuff in here, you know, as, as you, as you sit there and, and you, and you think about, um, and, and, and you think about how, how that works, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I had a great thought and it just leaked out on me. I hate that. Um, but, but you <laughs> know, when, when we, you know, we forget, you know, we start and, and we, we, we cast our own image, you know, and, and so, you know, all of a sudden, we think, you know, maybe God's made us, you know, we're a hammer, and sometimes we think we're a fine adjustment tool, and all we end up doing is breaking mm. things. Right. You know, it, it, when we forget our purpose, um, we lose the roots of what it is we're doing on a, on a daily basis. And, you know, and that, and I think that, that is, that's huge, and there's, there's some, and it, it's, it's fun that, you know, as, as you look at this, you know, these, 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 these two, three verse sections really is what we have here. You know, and and you mm-hmm. have some great structure in here, where 
you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I, and, and, and the Lord is my shepherd, and then, and why is he it? For his name's sake. You know, so in, in verse 3. So you have all of this great stuff that we'd love to unpack because we think, you know, we think, you know, because everything in the middle is wonderful for us. But right. we only have that when we remember our identity. And that's, and as you, as you point out, in that baptism, uh, in, is our, in our baptismal identity, when he puts his name on us, you know, it, it's, it's when he's shepherding, all the good things I have in my life, you know, I, I'm not lacking. I, I lack no thing, you know. As the, you know, if you that you, you read the wooden Hebrew, it says, you know, I, I lack no thing, you know, right. nothing, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I, there is no lack. There is no lack, and, and and you sit back. It's and when you reflect on your life, you know, more often than not, when you truly lack nothing, it's when you are. When 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 you have not wandered from the care of the good shepherd, absolutely. So so we see that, that that's helpful as a, as a way of kind of grounding this. Because on the one hand, the psalm is maybe more about David than we'd care to uh, think about or acknowledge. You know, I mean, and, and that is kind of our tendency in our, our modern context that we we want to pick up the Bible. And, you know, we, we kind of want to, like, just kind of flip open a page and it's just, boom, God tells me something that's going to address the exact problem I'm dealing with. It's like, I mean, people have been kind of using the Bible like it's an app or something, right? Or like oh, yeah. it's Google. Um, Click since, here. Since before, Click here. Yeah, that's right. Before, before apps and things and, and Google was really big, right? So on the one hand, um, there, there is this challenge that this is about David and the idea that, he functions well as a shepherd, as a king, when he remembers that God is his shepherd and king. So, I mean, it, it is on a certain level about about David, about kingship. Um, I mean, maybe maybe the modern connection then is about the office of the keys, right? So, on the one hand, it is kind of a, you know, it might not actually be about like you know uh, you know me you know, Joe sitting here looking at this. But as you said, though, it does become connected to us through through baptism and we and the idea of belonging to the shepherd and, and even, you know, as part of the royal priesthood, standing in, in the place of and representing the shepherd, because even even the laity does this. It's not exclusively the pastor. So so there's there's gonna be a balance of like th- this kind of is talking about someone else or something else. And then as you were saying, but it does it does really still apply to me. So with that in mind, I think that's the framework we kind of need, the balance sure. we need when we're sure. when we're listening then to to this uh, the rest of this this psalm here. So let's let's go ahead with that kind of balance in mind. Hear the words then. So I'll I'll, I'll redo verse one and then we'll uh go through through verse six and then we can start looking at the individual words you already mentioned some of the individual words of verse one that we should take a look at there's verse one boom there it is let's talk about those but here's verses one through six then the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Yeah, I just, just, <laughs> yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a, just a beautiful, it's a beautiful psalm. It speak just as, as you read it, you know, there's, um, you, you noticed, it, it kind of goes, there's something about the way that it just goes from one sentence to the next, there's right. a lot of kind of this, what's called in kind of a technical, uh, to use a technical term, a syndeton. Like there's not a lot of and, but, though, uh, that sort of thing. It's just kind of statement, 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 statement. And, and when you have that, right, 
there, there's, a, there's a certain kind of like emotional quality to that where it's like it, it kind of feels like the person is just in the midst of the experience in the mi- in the midst of whatever's going on and they are just saying what they see right in front of them and so you can feel like you're in David's shoes just watching God do this stuff I mean, and it's just the, the feeling of comfort like you just get a feeling of comfort um, well and i think you know, as you I, read I, it right you know and i think it's also important for us to understand you know it's it's as as you unpack these these two basically if you if you if you really want to look at it if this is if the psalms really are a a hymn book of the old testament what you could almost see is you know these two three verse stanzas you know, mm-hmm. and and as you go through them, and I think I think the comfort comes in, as as the the the, the words that is are being spoken about who this good shepherd is, this shepherd is the Lord. Okay, it, there there is great comfort in the fact that in each of these stanzas, you know, he's drawing you deeper into your identity, which is completely formed and informed by him. You know, so so you you know so you have this, you have you have the t- basically what you're looking from. You know, if if I am a sheep, okay, if I am a sheep, what I need is provision and protection, and and, and that's what we have. You know, this first stanza is really dealing with provision. You know the the things that you know uh, your herd the herd needs to be the herd needs to be well fed the the, the it needs it needs water uh, the, the water that restores and 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 keeps them you know uh, from the time you know when they're when they're wandering in the wilderness you know when they're being driven from one pasture to the next there's walking and 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 it, it's it, it's again in many areas it's arid. So, so you still need right. that. While well, you need the green pastures, but you need the waters, and 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 yet it, it it's it all it's all about him, not me. Right. You know, so so we have that great provision in the in that first in that first section. Yeah, that that is that is helpful. Uh, the last thing you said too that it is um it's a it's a very emotional psalm. It's an emotional hymn in that respect, right? But it's it's all about. I mean, and there is like, you know, don't let's let's not misunderstand. Like, we're not saying that, like, you know, the word I does not appear. Right. It, it is right. talking about like, you know, David is talking about his his feelings and like what God is doing for him. Right. But as you were saying, the focus, though, right, even though it's in terms of David, right, the focus is on what God is doing to him. Right. And not the other way around, which which is uh I feel like kind of noteworthy just by itself, um, just in terms of, you know, what kinds of poems and, and hymns are we using and, and what directions do they go in? Is there a balance there? But put, putting that aside and just trying to um, not succumb to the temptation to get on my soapbox, let's mm-hmm. just uh, <laughs> take a look at verse one. Um, so just just these words all by itself. You were you were starting to say this at the beginning here. Um you know, that we get to the, the last two words. I mean, it's, it's really interesting that verse one, as we, as we have it, um, just the Lord going to the word want there in Hebrew, it's mm-hmm. just four words, um, right. <laughs> which is, which is quite remarkable. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it is just, um, Yahweh Roy lo echtar, like, and that's, and that's, that's it. Just four words. Um, yep. And, and the position and the impact of each of them is just, it, yeah. it's immense. And I, I think um, we skip over it too easily. The very first word is the name of God, isn't it? Yes. Well, and, and again, what is, you know, and you want to talk about, the, okay, we, we don't want to get too wonky with structure, but the reality is, you know, all this other good stuff that we, you know, okay, we don't, we're, we're not lacking anything. But this, that, right. this, this stanza starts with the name of the Lord, and it talks about the impact of the name of the Lord. We are, we are led to be who we are. Again, not about us, but about Him. What does it mean that this Yahweh is my shepherd? He's leading me in His paths for His name's sake. Again, it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, it is so much more about 
who you know it, it's not about us. This says, this this psalm says you know boatloads about God, not right. me. You know, you know, you know. We, we dare not read this and say, "Bully for me." I have this wonderful. Look at this shepherd that I have. No, this is what he. You know, I. I you know, and, and this is this is the response of faith, which sees the shepherd providing me all that I have. You know, everything right. I need to support this body and life. Where does it come from? Yahweh. And my okay. response is 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 living in this righteousness for His name's sake. You know, right. so and, and again, and, and so we, uh, so so we are then. You know, he 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 has put this name on us. He provides us. And he provides all these things for us. We are simply stewards of these good gifts. Right, and, and so it's actually very fitting that the ESV gives this uh, the title, "The Lord is my shepherd," which is just actually the first two words, as we were saying in Hebrew. Uh, right. be, because that really is what the psalm is trying to say. That is right. is the whole dominant idea that from which everything else comes. As you were saying, like everything else that we talk about, um, from "I shall not want" to "I shall dwell in the house," right? All right. of that is all consequences of this two word fact, Yahweh Roi, the Lord is my yeah. shepherd. And and it's um it's interesting too that the words are actually in that order because it's as if it's answering the question like, well, who is your shepherd, right? Who who is your authority? Who is the one who is your king, right? And, and the answer is emphatically God, Yahweh, Yahweh right? Like, Yahweh. and that's and that's surprising in the respect that here it's David who's saying that, right? You know, it, it's not him saying like, oh well, I mean, I'm the I'm the king, of course, that's it. Like, no, he he turns it around, and so just having you're, you're always going to have a king. I mean, just maybe we can kind of extend to this. It's kind of the same thing as what Luther says about the first commandment. You're always going to have a God. There's always something in your life that's setting the agenda and calling the shots, right? The question is, what is it? And uh, I, we've already gone a little bit over time here, but uh, let's take our short break and we'll come right back to this very question. Everyone, hang on. We're looking at Psalm 23 here on Nice Strong Word, and we'll be right back. These are the voices of young Lutherans in Mexico City, children who are excited to learn more about their Savior, Jesus. But they need our help, because good Lutheran books for kids in the Spanish language are in short supply in Mexico. To learn how you can help tell Spanish-speaking kids everywhere about Jesus in a language they can understand, go to the Lutheran Heritage Foundation website at lhfmissions.org forward slash Juan 316. Welcome back, everybody, to Thy Strong Word. I'm Pastor A.J. Espinosa. We're looking at Psalm 23 today, and we're joined by Pastor Nathan Metter, pastor at St. John Lutheran Church in Plymouth, Wisconsin, a place that our good Lord saw fit to place him because, as he was saying earlier, um, you can take the girl out of Wisconsin, but you can't take the Wisconsin out of the girl. Or, in the, case, <laughs> in the case of Psalm uh, 23, right? You, you can uh, take David out from among the shepherds, but you can't take the shepherd out of David, right? So right. Uh, here we are looking at this. Uh, this is the psalm, right? The Lord is my shepherd. And so we were just talking about this idea. Um, you always you always have a shepherd. Um, the, the question is, who is it? And then it's just that two-word statement in Hebrew just changes everything. And before we continue the discussion, just want to make sure to thank our underwriters at the Lutheran Heritage Foundation check out their website at lhfmissions.org. So, uh, yes, right. So it's, it's, and this, this is what you were saying. It's about, it's about him, but it's, it's about him in the sense of it's answering this, this kind of immediate and always there question, right? Who, who is shepherding you? Because it, it, it is even like a little bit like that. I mean, I think the word basically just means shepherd, but Right. Um, it is technically kind of a, a verbal idea in Hebrew, like who's mm -hmm. the one shepherding, who's the one leading, right? Like who's right. who's at the helm, who's in the cockpit, and the fact that it's God changes everything else. Well, it's only going to be. I mean, really, you know, we we sit at you know we we talk about other gods, other gods, other gods, other gods, but ultimately it comes down to this. It goes back to it goes back to Genesis three. 
um, we're either you know we are either going to be faithful stewards of God or we're going to try and take God's place because ultimately you know whatever our whatever else our false god is you know we are guilty of this is this is transference if you want to use a psychological term you know I'm going to cast on whatever person or whatever thing or whatever possession I, I'm just going to but but really what happens if I'm casting my vision on what what it's going to be like to be God I'm making myself out to be God Right. And yep. and again, and that and that's where again, as we mentioned in the first half hour, uh, it, when David cast his God image on other things, that's when his life goes to Hades in a handbasket. And mm-hmm. and he and and yet, and the beautiful thing, and, and this is the gorgeous thing, you know, as we 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 have this idealistic view of David, um, and yet, what what. When we look at the life of David, we shouldn't see him. We we shouldn't see the example of David. What we should see is is how this shepherd works in the life of his repeatedly wayward sheep. And mm-hmm. and you know and, and and then what we do, that's when we begin to understand the goodness and mercy part. It's not a quid pro quo goodness and mercy. You're a good little boy, therefore you get dessert. You know, you clean your right. plate, you get dessert. No, God's God's mercy shows because of His name's sake. Right. And when God is when God is providing for us, when God is protecting us, again, it says more about God than it says about me. Because I know I certainly don't deserve it. Well, and I think I think that actually that point you're making just there speaks to the second half of the verse. Um, again, these two words in Hebrew, um, like "I shall not lack." Um, you know, I, I, I won't lack. It's just, there it is not, I will lack, um, you know, lo exar. And I think that in many ways, everything else in, in two through six is kind of just a restatement of those same two words, right? Like it right. doesn't say like, you know, I won't lack food. Right. Um, and it's like, okay, that's, that's one idea. And then let's move on to the next idea. No, it's, I'm not going to lack. And if you kind of, yeah. in some translations will say this, right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I won't lack anything. Um, in in right. fact, that, that's what the, the NIV does. They, they translate it as um, I lack, well, I lack nothing. Uh, you know, it, it and is I wonder, you know, again, and this is the problem when, yeah. you know, and I, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, I won't say that, that the, the sense of the NIV is incorrect. But yeah. what I but what I think they're doing is you know it, it's very easy for us especially when you see that that that, that first stanza that follows when it's talking about provision things you know right. uh, and, and and what I think if when we start supplying extra words we start reducing the scope of the magnitude right. of what's said there okay I sh- I know lack. You know, if you just right. you know it's it's okay it's, it's okay. I understand it's horrible English, but 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 the the goldenness the depth and the riches of what it, I I I I know lack you know I lack nothing you know I I I don't I will not be want for I will not be want well it, it, right. It, you're right it is daily bread like we would pray in the Lord's prayer but it's so right. much more than that you know it's, right. you know it, it, it's not just the 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 you know the the chicken chicken bacon Caesar that I had for salad that I had for lunch today. Thanks be to God, good gift. Oh, wow, you know, that I received. Like a king, yeah. Well, yeah, it was it was a new <laughs> new special today. At, new special today at the local <laughs> restaurant owned by one of my members. Uh, but, oh, but, very good. but but the, but 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 it, it's not only that. It's this goodness and mercy that follows me all the days of my right, life. Right, right, exactly. It, you know, it's and, all and, that and, it's all that stuff, and, and that, it speaks to that the word means right that yeah. you know, and we translate it. You know, so so yeah, so the the old um, this this word want like that, right? Like be in want. Yeah, I mean that's an old translation that goes back to the King James, and 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 these days it probably is more accurate to say uh, lack in terms of you because know, want is pretty much today just means like I'm you know like desiring something. So it, it's right. not to say I won't desire. Like well well no, I mean <laughs> we're gonna have all kinds of desires in our lives, and, mm-hmm. and hopefully we have some good ones too, right? Some right. some good holy desires because. If you if you lack you know desiring the good things that's also going to be a problem right so yeah so don't misunderstand want but it's, it is interesting that the Hebrew sense of it is this this lack or um, you know even kind of the sense of like kind of being empty or some something not being there 
that should, right? right? Like, and it's interesting then when you combine that because the Hebrew form, it can have a kind of a sense of like, kind of, I don't know, in various situations, habitually, generally, but it does have, I think, a kind of future sense that the NIV, mm, I, I lack nothing, might, it might not get that idea across the right way. Like, it's not like it's saying as if, well, I look around and things are okay right now, right? Like, I lack, I lack nothing. I guess right now I'm, I'm doing all right. I think that the point is not that, actually, but the right. point is it's actually an assertion of confidence, right? It's not, it's not an observation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, oh, I, I guess everything's in place, right? It's actually a statement of confidence saying, because the Lord is my shepherd, right? right. No, no matter what happens, I mean, I mean, this is like really, you know, fleshing it out. No matter what happens, no matter what situation, you know, come what may, I will not lack any good thing, whether it's, you know, the physical kind of, you know, daily bread things like you were saying, or mm-hmm. things as a little bit more abstract and and, and really more profound, like goodness and mercy in the different situations in life. So, I mean, it really is a very profound two word statement that, that looks ahead to the future and says, if, if he's the one leading me, that doesn't matter where, where he leads me or where we happen to go. Right. It's going to be good every single time. Right. And again, and I think there's some of that es- eschatological now, not yet confession in the way the Hebrew is pointed out. And I think that's the point you've made. You know, it, it, it not only not only am I going to not, not lack today, and not only am I not going to lack next week, I'm not going to lack when when this whole shoot and match is over, which right. again makes it makes it such a wonderful text for us. Right. To yeah. No, I, I think you're 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 right. That's the side. logic that you know it, it, he is your shepherd now. So of course you don't lack anything now, but you know it it, it really is projecting it in, into the future yep. also. So you you got to no matter how you translate it, right? You you got to be able to maintain that. As you were saying, Correct. there is the now and the not yet. It's a statement of faith about both of those things. I mean, in some ways, really, right? I mean, uh, even into the past, even, because, hey, you know, he has been my shepherd. And the reason why you're saying this is because, well, hey, look, uh, I haven't lacked anything so far. Yep. He took the, He took this, you know, you think about it, he. He's taken this ruddy, young, handsome shepherd boy and made him king. He's taken this... Uh, this failed, broken sinner, and restored him as his sheep. He's restored him as king. You know, and 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 there's all of this. You know, again, as we see our not da- not David as an example, but see ourselves in David, both you know at the at the, you know his 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 uh, his rise, his fall, and his restoration. You know, that's how you know, and, that, and that's the joy that we have as we see ourselves in david and, and rather right. than rather than rather than a standard for us to live up to you know a moral code or moral compass this is we see how god works in david and and what we do is we see the same way that he's working the same way in us right exactly and and we can appreciate that i mean it, it's the the turn here that that happens at verse two right it's it's not difficult to see the analogies like yes it's it's put in terms of you know shepherding metaphors but obviously right um it, it's a metaphor for david too right mm-hmm. um it's, it's mm-hmm. not saying that i i don't know like oh isn't judah beautiful it has lots of green pastures and still waters right um right. i mean he's using this he's kind of you know in his mind pretending to to be the sheep right also right. um and so and it's not difficult for us to to see that and so you, you read these these next three lines, and because this, uh, you, you mentioned, you suggested a possible structure for how to look at this. And so that'll be interesting to consider. But you'll look at just, you know, at these next three lines. In, in the Hebrew, the, the thing that happens first is um, the, the thing. And then the second is the verb, uh, which is significant in, in this respect that you're saying, okay, so he's a shepherd. All right. Well, shepherds, what? Uh, they, they, they they make you lay, lie down places, right? They lead you places, uh, right? They 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 do certain um, acts of uh, restoration, right? Um, mm-hmm. Protection, right? Preservation. So so right. what sorts of those things does he do? And then, and the Hebrew answers by saying, you know, in green pastures he makes me lie down. Beside still waters he leads me. My soul 
he restores, right? And, and so all three of those lines then are answering those sorts of questions by saying, look to the extent of, look, look at the extent of his goodness, right? And this is that good shepherd idea, right? It's not like he's just a, an okay shepherd and yeah, he provides me with kind of basic leadership and protection, but you know, th this is the kind of place where he makes me lie down. This is the kind of water he takes me beside, right? It's not even just okay being led by him. It's, it's abundant. It's amazing. Right. That, and I think that's the, that's the key, you know, it, it, you know, and, and we'll see even more of, you know, and that, that's where this, this, the, the, the two, the second stanza intensifies the first, you know, so you have these green right. pastures, you have more than enough, you know, you, you have more than enough in this first half. And then we see a, a, as we kind of go through life, we have more than enough of this shepherd in life. We have more than enough of this shepherd in death, and we're going to come out the other side even better. R right, right. And, and, and then to what you said, so after the, this, these first like little uh, three lines here, it is kind of, as you said, you know, where you end up, right? There's the question of a destination, right? And, and where, so hang on, so where are we going, though? And, and and I think that's right, that there seems to be a shift, right? Like, these are kind of, this is kind of the way he does things, right? right. Like, the way he takes care of me on a daily basis, these first three lines. But then the next set of lines is, okay, but, like, where, where, are, we, where are we going, kind of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. Uh, let's let's just take a look at those ones then for for three the second half of three here three b here so it says <clears throat> he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me very striking this section because um, you know, you, you have, like you were saying, uh, the end of verse three flips everything around. The verb comes first, uh, and right. now what's being emphasized is this, like, righteousness for his name's sake. And verse four just uh, really changes things up because, um, I, well, of course, there's this mention of, like, it's the first mention that maybe something could be bad or scary, <laughs> right? There's a valley yeah. of shadow of death, right? So, so that's a pretty big transition all by itself. Um, but maybe the biggest one still is David switches from just describing the shepherd to you to talking to his shepherd. Right. Right. You, you do this, yep. you do this, right. you do this, you know, so, it, so it's, uh, and, and again, I think this is why, you know, this is another reason why we need to look at this Psalm, um, so that just, this does, just doesn't hit me in the feels, you know, because, right. you know, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy you know, like I put on a nice, uh, nice fresh, brand new wool sweater, uh, but the reality is, that the, the reality is that there is in this provision and protection, there is mercy being poured out, and and I have you know this identity, this identity that or of the of the shepherd, you know he he does this for me, and he you're right he's leading me somewhere, but again it's all about him, not about me. And, right. and I think that there is, you know, so often, you know, we, we again, we read this psalm almost aspirationally, and and mm. we we move yeah. ourselves out of the, we move we move ourselves into the center, right? You know, and rather than letting letting the shepherd lead, right? Well, and, and you know, I think that at the end of verse three, I mean, just everything about the, those first sections really does that well what you're just saying because mm -hmm. it's like these are the things that he gives right it's like the focus is on the gift right you know uh you know restoration of my my soul and the the waters and the green pastures right so and there's that kind of external orientation um and then and then furthermore at the end of it right like what's the concluding thought that kind of wraps all that stuff up uh, it is that his name right i mean it right. isn't it isn't like he's he leads me this way and he does these sorts of things because, you know, I, I have finally surrendered to him and I'm finally, you know, like a good kind of righteous person uh, that deserves this stuff finally. Right. Like, no, it's the sake of his name. It's like you were saying, it's the, the fact of his name, regardless, even of our failures. Right. That's the that's the, the grace involved in this. It is undeserved because you sit there and and and. 
as we reflect on our when we when we re- reflect on our sheepness, you know, you know, how many times have we heard these? You know, when 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 pastors will preach on this and or they'll teach on in a Bible class, they'll say, "Yeah, sheep are stupid." Well, no, more than not, they're, sheep aren't just stupid; they're willful. They're actually they're actually incredibly smart, but they mm-hmm. tend to be willful. And that's our our real <laughs> yeah. our real problem isn't our, our real problem isn't you know and so often we, you know uh, growing up in, in the St Louis area used to listen to Camo X at night and you know the old Jim White used to be the overnight host and he had his favorite saying you can't fix stupid you know and and <laughs> and, and that's what happens you know sometimes you know we when when you know when we soft pedal the fact that we're sheep. And, and and we're not just ignorant, you know. It's just not just a matter of education. Sometimes, you know, stupid is a choice, you know. And and we make willful as as in our sheepness before, uh, in the presence of our shepherd, we make willful stupid choices. You know, we know what the consequences are going to be, and we do it anyway. And yet, his name dwells on us, and what does it do? It calls us to repentance, and brings us right. back. He comes looking for us, and then, you know, and then to spill over into John 10, you know, he's that one who you know, hoists us on the shoulders and brings us home. Right, and it's that kind of confidence of his grace in spite of the circumstances mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. really actually gets us to verse 4. I mean, the, the, the bit about his name's sake actually preps us for the idea of right. verse 4, because, hey, if it's about his name— right, and, and not about anything else, then that means that the circumstances, right, or my own performance aren't aren't the things that matter. And so, like, verse right. 4 really logically follows there. And I, I think more than that, like, kind of, again, I, mean, I, I think that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I think it's actually a fine translation, but I think you have to understand it the right way, uh, because that does go back to the KJV. But the difficulty is that in <clears throat> like King James in English, Though I walk is actually the present subjunctive, um, and right. and it's just that you don't even know that because it's exactly the same form as the present indicative. But um, this is the kind of stuff where if you hear people say something like <clears throat> "the powers that be" or "till kingdom come," right, instead of "the powers that are" or "till right. kingdom comes," right, right, like right. that. That's it's actually this subjunctive form, and in fact. That's what's going on in the Hebrew, that this is right. not, again, this is not an observation. Like I'm looking around, right? And, oh, this is the valley of the shadow of death over here, right? No, that's right. that's not the point. Um, it's not just kind of an observation. It's uh, because of him and his abundant grace, I am confident that even for the times when I may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, even if it gets that bad, right. I'm not going to be afraid. I mean, it's, again, the confidence and again if you understand the ESV rightly in that old idiom mm-hmm. you can you can get that right but um, it's it's easy to to miss that and to shortchange the sense how often we do that you know and and, yeah. and again that's why that's why you know and, and again as that's why the psalms are meant to be read out loud and slowly and meditated on because if we if we just rip through them like we're reading a Dear Abby column or whatever, we are going to miss the depth. We're still going to get good things because it's still God's word. But but when you when you pull this apart and you know we spend an hour on the radio on six verses, um, <laughs> it, it it doesn't you know it, it, there is just so much more here than meets the eye. Right, right, um, and, and and kind of conversely, it's just uh, it, it's maybe just how 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 we so easily let just a, a small idea um get in the way of our eyes seeing everything that's there right we kind of we kind of don't actually look at the text itself we kind of look at the kind of a uh, you know kind of cheap cartoonish outline that we've made of it um and so we don't exactly. we don't see the thing that's actually there so you you have this this confidence um this assertion that you know come what may right there, there's mm-hmm. another right present subjunctive right um, you know, that we're, we're not going to be afraid, not in the sense, right, of like, I won't feel the emotions of, of fear or that it won't look scary, right? Um, but, but that idea of, you know, like, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to think that I'm in danger 
right? And, it, and it's again, it's because of you. That's and that's the turn right there, right? right? Right in the middle in verse four, we shift from the I to the you. It's a, it's a big one. It's and isn't that like the way that Luther talked about it, right? Like if you're in the midst of fear, if you're like, well, how how do I know if I have faith and how do I know if like, uh, you know, I, I really am like a Christian actually. And, you know, these sorts of things, um, you know, he says like, he doesn't give you like a 10 question quiz to figure out like if, if you really are right. He says, right. stop looking at yourself and look at Jesus there. He, he, he kind of just says, don't answer. I'm not going to answer your question. Look at Jesus. I'm um, stop right. doing this, putting everything in terms of yourself. And so rightly there is this, this turn here. And that's, um, you know, as we're like running out of time already, but like mm -hmm. the, the turn that you get when when it's uh, talking about you are with me, which is the, is the first thing that's said there, like you are with me. Right. And then it's your rod and your staff. Um, they comfort me like it, it's you is always the part. Right. That comes yep. first. You and the, those things uh, which are about you, which you use to to comfort me and to guide me in my life. That's what comes first. That's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking yep. at the rest of the stuff. You know, and what, when, when we fix our eyes on those things, you know, that's when the furrow is straight. You know, and, and it doesn't matter what's going on around us. We, you know, God is, is using his presence, his word, to lead us step by step, you know, even when, you know, especially in cases when, you know, we don't know which way to turn. You know, follow my voice, follow my voice. Absolutely. Follow my voice. Well, <clears throat> all right. So just just briefly with the tiny amount of time that's already left right um yeah. you know we, we joked about it before before we got started and, and uh, this is what we get i mean it's, it's it's there's so much right there's just so much right but so right. just looking at these last two verses then and just kind of by way of conclusion here i want to get your sure. get your thought on something so it says you know you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The, the the words in Hebrew seem to indicate this. Going to do this because this is the stuff that you do all the time, right? And this is right. the stuff that you ha have been doing. We've been talking yep. about that idea. Um, yep. And so it's kind of projecting this confidence um, because of his presence into the future. And it, there's, though, in verse 6, there's this all the days of my life that transitions to her. So... I know I, I'm ending with like a, a hard one, right? But so what what are your thoughts on that? Like the, you know, is this is this the best translation? Is it a good translation? How what's what's the emphasis anyway? What was David well, trying to get at? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. This is there is there is something that I found in the Hebrew that you know there it, it, there there's a little bit of debate. You know where you know we the, those familiar words. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, the 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 the, the, the word in there is shuv in Hebrew. Okay, mm -hmm. there, you know, there's a and the, the Masoretes didn't have an issue with this, but but the reality is there's 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 a returning idea. Yeah. Okay. There's a returning idea. It's not just that I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Again, there is repentance in that I'm going to and 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 what do what do I find when the Lord breaks me and turns me around? I find His Chesed, His mercy and grace. I am dwelling in the house of the Lord forever because this is where he wants me. Why? For his name's sake. I am redeemed and restored, not because I'm a really swell dude. I am redeemed and restored because I have this amazing God who is a shepherd who will never abandon his sheep. He will come looking for them, even to the point of death and death on a cross. Nothing is going to keep him from being my good shepherd no matter how Amen. rotten I am. And when he, you know, when he, and again, this is to go back to the, the girl from Wisconsin, okay? I chased her so long that she finally turned around <laughs> and caught me. You know, right. and this is the God who pursues and pursues and pursues. And when we, you know, and, and we become so Davidic broken, right. you know, and, and what does he do? He catches me, hoists me on right. his shoulders, and he brings me home again because of he, who he is, not because of who I am. I think that's that's a perfect uh, way of putting it. Um, yes, it's it's true to the actual text, the actual verb. It, it's about the return, right? You know, and yeah. so you get that sense of it's like a, you know, like amazing grace. Like no matter how many times we've returned, right? The idea, the the return is always there for us in yep. Christ. That that's the idea. That those open arms, the embrace of the shepherd. 
that we're always, he's always bringing us back, always bringing us back. Amen. So good having you on brother, having you back. Um, and here we are six verses and we're way over time, but it's just, this was beautiful. So I think it was worth it. Uh, but thank you so much and come back again and, uh, let's take a look at another Psalm together soon. Sounds good. Take care, brother. You too. Everybody, that was Pastor Nathan Metter, pastor of St. John Lutheran Church in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Until next time, everybody, I'm Pastor A.J. Espinosa. Peace. You've been listening to Thy Strong Word, produced by the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate Office of National Mission in cooperation with Worldwide KFUO, the official broadcast ministry of the LCMS. Your support is vital for this program to continue. You can make a gift safe, secure, and easily online at kfuo.org. Thank you for listening and supporting Thy Strong Word.